Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, um, I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer. And what I try to do with the videos and the content that I create and share is to really explore um, sort of a fusion of the main traditional astrology, bringing in at times some of the asteroids and the newer dwarf planets that um, a lot of astrologers are now talking about and um, exploring, but also bring in the cosmic and the fixed star and galactic energies and um, influences as well um, and also you know there are almost always themes and messages that come through as I work to interpret the charts I look at numerology the numbers might be talking and um, you know basically to give you um, sort of well just insight really on some of the energies that are coming through each of these incredible astrological events now of course you know astrology is not a predictive science. It is not an exact science. There is no one fixed way of interpreting interpreting the planets or these signs or you know the aspects. And um, it is very much fluid. And um, so you know you may hear a lot of what I say repeated elsewhere. But equally, I hope that I can bring something new and maybe sort of um, present a slightly different angle or perspective. So if you want to find out about my work, because I do offer readings, I have a website, spiralbright.co.uk. And I also send out a monthly newsletter with a heads up on what to expect for the following month. And so you can join my mailing list to receive that via my website as well. So let's sort of talk about this solar eclipse and you know yes I say it every time um it's a powerful one there is so much to share and say and sort of bring forward and um, just to sort of for the for the basics it is on the 2nd of October next week it is a new moon and um, so if this is when the sun and the moon join together in the chart and on this occasion they are meeting at 10 degrees three minutes of Libra. Now the reason in astrological terms that it is an eclipse is because the south node is very close to the moon and the sun to this new moon. And um, so we're working with a south node solar eclipse and it is not a total eclipse so the um the light will not be entirely um obscured because of the angle of the moon and the sun in relation to earth so what we're going to find and this obviously will depend on where you are whether you are actually in the eclipse pathway and um, that there will be an annular um eclipse which is the ring of fire so the moon won't entirely obscure the sun and there will still be this beautiful ring of light round the edges. Now that in itself um, feels really beautiful, really symbolic to me um, because when we are working with the south node, um, we are very much looking at what we are releasing and letting go of and transmuting. And the fact that we have this ring of fire, you know, in itself just feels that we've got this um, beautiful sort of energy helping us to burn away what no longer serves. So there is this added sort of um, support and energy to help us to do that. But of course, you know, we also have the energy of the new moon, this being a solar eclipse. So there is a real sort of sense of something new is coming in. And, you know, when I talk about new moons, generally the focus is more on what we are seeding, what we are inviting in, what we want to manifest, create, and, um, you know, generate and give birth to. But I'm feeling really strongly with this particular um, lunation that because and as well I guess um you know it's very sort of Libran in just in this theme alone but there is very much one side that is very focused on releasing and letting go and the other side of bringing in the new so I'm going to talk about both um sort of themes because I feel there's messages coming through both um but uh yeah, when we are working with the new moon, um, obviously the moon loses the light of the sun because they are together. So we are in a period of darkness, um, which is absolutely ripe to be able to seed something because all of life comes from a dark space, whether that is from the womb, whether that is the seed planted in the earth underground. When we are working with that dark space, um, it, it is very fertile and there is potential for growth, but we have 
have to often go into the dark to be able to be born or reborn. So again, that theme feels really relevant. Um, you know, there's a question of what are we seeking to seed or bring in at this time? And I will, of course, talk about the Libra themes um, in a minute. Um, but it is certainly a new chapter. There is no doubt about that. But in order to be able to bring in this new chapter and to welcome it, we need to create the space. And this is, you know, a reminder, as so much of astrology, almost all of astrology is, that we are in this eternal cycle and that things have to come to a natural end in order for the new to be reborn. It's like when you get around all 12 houses, you step into this sort of void, um, which is effectively spirit before you then come back and start again at Aries and are reborn or as a fresh slate, you know, ready to have a new experience. It's the same in nature, the trees, you know, the leaves grow old and die and fall and shed and then the new growth comes in the spring. So we're reminded constantly that everything is a cycle and that we are constantly transforming in order to bring in a higher and newer version of ourselves. You know, and this does often require a shedding and letting go, a purging, um, sort of really transmuting the old in order that we can um, sort of bring in and sort of almost be an energetic match for the new energies and frequencies that, you know, want to come in and want to be integrated. So, um it's interesting. So obviously Libra is, um, you know, we have the scales, we've got this balance. Um, the actual eclipse, the 2nd of October is an 11 mass today. So already um, the 11 to me is the number of the mirror of seeing two sides of one side being reflected to the other. There's a real sort of sense of projection here and reflection. And there's also for me, when I'm thinking about the 11, it's a very star seedy number. It's, it's about channeling. It's about having that direct line, that direct channel sort of from above to below without any um, sort of interference. So the, because the 11 is so direct, it feels very pure um, and very elevated. So this is about, you know, the number of enlightenment, the number of higher consciousness, um, you know, very much about divine guidance coming through. And it's interesting that the 11 does appear in other parts of the chart, which I'll highlight as I sort of go through this video. And um, so the mirror is very much about us sort of learning through what is reflected back to us from other people, other situations, other experiences. And when we're working with Libra, that is one of the main themes, because when we get to Libra, you know, we've learned a lot about ourselves and now we start to learn we're always learning about ourselves, but we start to use um, the um, other people to do that. And when we're working with Libra, you know, we are experiencing life with another in a relationship through another person by having the other person reflect aspects of us back to us that we maybe can't see ourselves. That's really important when we're working with Libra. Um, we also have the themes of contracts, agreements and arrangements when we're working with Libra, because it is effectively anything outside of the self that comes into this realm. When when we are working with the energy of Libra, we are very much, you know, invested in partnerships, in relationships, in collaborating with other people, in coming together to create something. There is strength in numbers and coming together and that cooperation that community and with Libra you know we're also able to see both sides so it it becomes harder to be in conflict when you're working with strong Libra energy because you know it isn't a case of you're right I'm wrong it's a case of let's talk and see if we can come up with some kind of compromise or middle ground because Libra is very much about bringing balance and bringing harmony and focusing on peace so you know very much also about co-creation, which, you know, takes us back to the beautiful energy of the solar eclipse and something new being seeded. And I should have said earlier that when we're working with eclipse energy, you know, something is being eclipsed. 
you know, <laughs> that's what it says on the tin, on the packet. Um, but in a new moon, it's something that's potentially being eclipsed into your life, into our world. Something unexpected because eclipses can be really sort of like wild cards. They can shift our trajectory quite dramatically. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the change will happen on the day of the eclipse because the effect of the energy lasts for a good six months. But certainly there is a shift energetically, which then has a ripple effect onto how you know our sort of experience in life and our whatever the theme of the eclipse sort of manifests and represents and um, so you know there is definitely the sense of the unexpected and really deep profound and permanent changes and shifts as well when we are working with the eclipse energy and um, so, you know, it, yeah, it's very easy, as I was saying, with Libra to be able to see both sides, so to come together. And again, that feels really significant, and I'll explain why. Um, there's also, you know, this real sense that relationships um, are definitely um, up for a big shift and an radical overhaul um almost like an up leveling or sort of an elevation in some way you now it does mean especially as we're working with the south node energy that you know relationships that have sort of served their purpose um you know served their purpose and sort of taught us what we need to do especially if they're part of a soul contract are likely to come to an end but that doesn't mean necessarily that we're all going to get divorced and we're all going to fall out with our friends you know this is where there is the potential for growth and evolution um you know and sort of an enhancement within the relationship then that is also likely to be triggered with this eclipse energy so you know again it's a beautiful time for really coming into a much more um sort of elevated version of your relationships but again just be mindful that if something really has run its course and you know and it has nothing more to teach you then it is possible that you know relationships will sort of start to um sort of fall away and it can be dramatic or it can just be very gentle and you know almost you don't almost as if you won't even notice it so just be mindful that you know relationships are very much the theme of this eclipse now because we're working with the um south node and what came through to me um yesterday when i was in my um sort of shavasana at the end of my yoga class which is always a, a nice time to sort of for inspiration to come through was that you know we're working very much with the south node we are working with um the letting go of parts of our lives where basically you know we've either outgrown or they've served their purpose and we need to move on now this can include our comfort zone and um, because you know if we stay in our comfort zone we can't really experience any growth because we kind of feel like we've got as far as we need to go or that we are comfortable going. So it can keep us very trapped. But as we're working with the South Node Eclipse, the energy is very much about sort of highlighting and shining a light on where it is that, um, you know, things have been outgrown they have come sort of run their course. They have got no longer anything to teach you. You know, so if there is any part of your life that you're experiencing outside of yourself where you are not sort of in a harmonious place, that there isn't balance, that there isn't equality and um, that there isn't sort of cooperation and collaboration where, you know, things may be completely out of balance. And maybe you're giving everything to someone and they're not giving anything back. It's it's OK in the short term. But if this continues sort of long term, you know, the impact is always going to be really detrimental. So it is about bringing things back into a more equal shape and form and and just heart bring balancing the energies out so you can experience more peace and more harmony and if we think um you know about the idea of projection and the fact that with Libra, we often project aspects of ourselves to other people so that they can then mirror them back. You know, it might be that they trigger us and they annoy us, but it almost always it is because you are seeing part of yourself within that person and they are mirroring it back so that you have to look at it, you have to deal it, you have to face up to it. And if we sort of take that theme one step further, you know, it was my sort of 
feeling that this eclipse is likely to really shine a light on where that might be happening in the wider world, in the wider collective. And um, because if we think, you know, we spend a lot of our lives, we are sort of brought up or expected or even conditioned to behave in a certain way. You know, there's obviously expectations through society, there's rules, there's regulations in order to keep the peace and to keep order. Um, but often, you know, we are almost encouraged to behave in ways that maybe don't align with the true selves, with our authentic selves. We have to sort of merge and shape shift our energy and our behavior in order to conform and to fit in. But it feels that, you know, if this is the case and if we've been sort of receiving stories or versions of reality that perhaps, you know, have been in some ways manipulating or, or controlling us or sort of, um, basically resulting in us behaving in a certain way or understanding a certain thing or having a certain belief system um, in order to keep the control, keep the peace. I think you know where I'm going with this. And, um, you know, that that light is going to be shone really brightly and it is going to be, although, you know, we have this darkness of the moon, when, the sh when we are encouraged to go into the dark and into the shadow, you know, we can actually see what is hidden there. So there's this sort of... Um, element of you know we are moving into a time and it's it's becoming clear as day to me just from sort of keeping half an eye on what's going on you know in the world that so much is coming to light so much is being revealed that is coming up from the dark and I feel that this eclipse is only going to trigger even more of that so we're going to see an escalation in sort of things that were hidden coming to the surface so that they can be seen, so that they can be healed and transmuted, but also being able to see where perhaps you might have been living a version of reality that was being projected onto you that wasn't actually your truth. And, you know, it is quite possible that a lot of people are going to get quite a sharp wake up call at this time. And certainly over the next coming months where we start to realize that actually, you know, a lot of what we sort of were led to believe or that we've grown up believing or sort of being um, encouraged to sort of buy into isn't actually rooted in truth. Again, and it feels, I feel like I'm going around in circles repeating, but obviously there's a reason for that. It feels that, you know, this is a time when we are really letting go of where we have been reliant on other people's versions of a story other people's versions of reality and also where we've been really codependent in unhealthy ways where we've been so sort of trapped or attached to someone or something or some idea or some version of truth or reality which has actually been holding us back and not allowing us to move forward and to grow so again you know you can really sort of I'm hoping feel into this the sense of that I'm getting through this energy. Um, so we have got, um, so that that's sort of the, the letting go, the south node side um, story, but we also have the, um, the new moon side, so the new beginning. And, you know, if we sort of consider that this new moon and the chart and all the energies coming through it are very much linked to the feminine energy. And when I talk about the feminine, it isn't about gender. It is more about the energy of the divine feminine. So this is very much about um, sort of being in more flow, much more in your heart as opposed to your head and being able to surrender and step back and sort of accept and receive, um, you know, accept and receive the feminine energy is very creative and very fertile and um, which is very much related to what I'm going to talk about when we look at the chart and um, very much about feelings and very graceful and um, also very intuitive very soft very gentle you know it is really beautiful it doesn't mean being weak far from it you can be very much in your feminine side and feel strong and resilient and able to really sort of be sovereign but it also means that you know when we're working with the feminine energy we don't have to go into battle we don't have to trigger conflict in order to learn our lessons it's very much about stepping into that flow and being open and having that trust and that faith which again comes through the chart in so many ways so the reason I'm saying it's a feminine chart is because the ruling planet is Venus. Venus rules Libra. 
Um, so, you know, Venus, the goddess of beauty, of love, um, she shows us, you know, where and what we value in this world. She can indicate our gifts and our talents as well and how we relate to people, um, you know, and just really that beautiful heart sort of consciousness and feeling. Now, Venus is in Scorpio in this chart, and she happens to be at 11 degrees. So she is in a beautiful water sign of Scorpio, which again is very much about healing, but also having the ability to kind of go into the depths, into the shadow, into what is hidden, what lies beneath, what lies underground in order to find the light and to rise again and to be reborn in a, in a new version of, of the self, which again feels really relevant for this eclipse. Um, so there's quite a few other parts of um, the chart, but I'm going to show it to you now. Okay, so this is the chart for the eclipse. And um, what I just want to highlight, first of all, is this beautiful bunching of planets um, and dwarf planets in, the, um, in this part of the chart, which is obviously Libra. We have got our moon and our sun at 10 degrees, three minutes. We also have, this is Mackie Mackie, and I'll talk about the significance of um, this dwarf planet. We have Black Moon Lilith, that is the mean calculation. We have Mercury. And we also have the vertex here, along with the south node, which is at six um, degrees of Libra. So huge focus on the Libra energies. I've already talked about the Libra themes. I don't need to repeat myself. But what? Um, so you can see how close um, the south node is to the sun and the moon, obviously, with the north node in opposition there in Aries. Now we have, um, let's talk about Mercury first, because Mercury is at the 11 degrees of Libra. And again, you know, for me, the 11 is very much about having that direct access, that channel, that insight that comes straight through without any adulteration, interference. You know, it is very pure. And with the um, the fact that Mercury is at 11 degrees in Libra, there's almost this sort of clarity now about the fact, you know, that there is another way, there is another side and that we can actually see it. So where we might have been blind to another point of view or another reality or a different story or another version of events it's going to be come really really clear that actually there is more than meets the eye there is another side and it's going to be um sort of revealed as part of this eclipse energy and i feel that is going to build over the coming weeks and months so um you know for anyone that sort of you know, has been, is tapped into a sort of truer version of reality. I think this is a really good sort of um, good news, <laughs> um, a good omen for um, much more coming to light and much more truth being revealed. Now, we also have um, Black Moon Lilith. Now, Black Moon Lilith is the wild woman and um, she is sort of that um, deeply feminine energy. So again, we've got that feminine feminine archetype but she um is the divine feminine who has been repressed who has had to remain in the shadows who um you know has not had access or full access to her power and again the fact that she's sitting here right next to you know all these um sort of other um planets and dwarf planets in the chart it just feels really empowering for her it feels that she is coming into a place of more equality sitting right next to mercury she's been given a voice and the opportunity to speak i mean in her case she might want to scream because you know she feels like she has been vilified and repressed and sidelined and um, you know for so long but and but she cannot be sort of held down ultimately she has to express herself and she's been given and um, you know this opportunity at this time to really stand up and speak and it is fascinating you know to see some of the stories that are coming out in the news that are relating to um sort of um sexual ex sexual crimes and abuse and trafficking and and all of that so again you know the, the presence of black moon lilith here is um 
really not coincidental when we sort of consider what is starting to come out in our world. Also have um, Maki Maki. Now, this is the dwarf planet. I'm not an expert at all about the dwarf planets, but we had a presentation from Alan Clay in our galactic um, astrology community with Julia Balaz recently. And he was talking about the dwarf planets that he um, teaches about. And Maki Maki, um, the fact that Maki Maki is here again at that 10 degrees, um, I should have said earlier that the 10 um, reduces down to the one. So this is very much the number of new starts, of bringing in the new, of birth, and also of leadership and pioneering and sort of breaking new grounds and going where perhaps we've not been before because, you know, the one wants to take that step ahead and walk in front and show the others the way. And um, so Maki Maki is um it's the higher octave of uranus this is the god of fertility strong links to fertility here and um, very much about gen regeneration and renewal comes through um abundance manifestation the giver of life and also a really strong um sense of community and the fact that you know it often takes a community to bring a child into the world to bring something new into the world not necessarily not necessarily a child but to create something and to allow it to grow and to support it and to nurture it so again you know we have this beautiful themes of cooperation of community of co-creation as being something that we are really being invited to look at and consider because it feels that once we're able to let go of lots of the old stories, old programs, what we've sort of been relied on or dependent on or controlled and manipulated by, that we're going to have this space to bring in this new. And it is very much about sort of giving birth to a new way that is going to be much more harmonious, much more peaceful, much more balanced and much more rooted in equality and equilibrium. So um, just really um, interesting that Maki Maki is here and playing such a big part in the chart at this time. Now, I talked about Venus at the 11 degrees, but obviously Scorpio as well is very much a sign of regeneration and rebirth. So again, you know, we have that um, symbology and that um, energy coming through venus as well um so that's really beautiful now let's talk about a couple of other things in this chart mars over here is at 15 degrees of cancer and mars um you know isn't necessarily as sort of competitive or warrior like in cancer because this is a water sign but there is a real sort of drive a real passion a real motivation to connect with what it is that makes us feel safe, protected. What does home mean to us? What is the frequency of home for us? And also Mars in Cancer is really asking us to sort of look at and engage with um, our roots and our ancestry and our um, lineage and where we come from. Um, so, you know, the fact that Mars is squaring all these planets in Libra is really asking us to consider, you know, as we bring in this new way of sort of working in partnership and peace and harmony, you know, is how is it going to make us feel um, deep down in our core? How is that going to bring in a safe a feeling of more safety and more protection and being nurtured and nourished because the square, yes, it can create challenge, but it also is very catalytic. And it means, you know, we have to consider all of this in what it is that we're bringing in and focusing on through this eclipse. So that's a really beautiful um, alignment. And we also have this amazing grand water trine between Mars, between um, Venus and up between Saturn in Pisces. Now, we think Mars represents the divine masculine, um, Venus represents the divine feminine, and we have Saturn, which is really about um, sort of the, the master or the father figure, um, the coming, it's very much a coming of age, and we have this beautiful flow of the trine energy between these three points, so it is very much encouraging us um, to really look at bringing the masculine and the feminine into balance and sort of creating a more um, more mature, a more masterful, um, a more enlightened and more spiritual sort of um, 
perspective and relationship between the two so we've got this lovely energy and when we have a grand water trine the water flows between the planets um so you know it is very much we don't have to fight we don't have to resist we don't have to sort of put in too much effort because it is effortless it's flowing to us and um, it can be obviously with strong water very cleansing but also very emotional so we may find at this time you know that emotions are running very high but ultimately it is deeply healing because as we allow those waters to come in and wash away the old through the south node and um, you know it is really clearing that space and cleansing and healing us so that we can move forward it's interesting that you know as where i'm based in the uk we have got huge amounts of rain we've had loads of flash flooding it's been really really awful and i know that you know it's not um limited to here there's other parts of the world that have been experiencing huge amounts of water lately so again you know that is another um P potential with added water within the chart but um you know from a high perspective it is serving a very cleansing and very healing purpose as well so we have um we have Ceres or Ceres up here at 11 degrees of Capricorn. And again, you know, a dwarf planet very linked to um, fertility. She is the goddess of fertility, um, of the harvest, of bountiful gifts, of renewal. So the fact that she is in an exact square to Mercury and obviously um, just slightly out of a square, but it's pretty exact with the other planets and with the eclipse at this time, you know, again, is just that extra element of fertility of renewal of rebirth and how are we going to kind of make it more tangible more real through Capricorn you know how can we this is something that you know we might have to work hard to achieve but it is there for the taking we can master it if we put in the effort and we sort of you know almost with Capricorn we're looking above at what we can sort of reach up to and pull in so again you know there is a sense of climbing up to get it but it will be worth it it will absolutely be worth the effort and again with that exact try and the sorry exact square and the number 11 as well that feels really divinely placed and um, we have the last thing I want to talk about in this chart is the Jupiter squaring Chiron, because, again, you know, these are exact squares, pretty much both at 21 degrees of their respective sign. And this for me is very much um, about sort of Jupiter is expansion through understanding. So, you know, again, with Gemini, there are there is more than one side to the story and Jupiter wants to get to the bottom of that to know everything. But again, there's new information coming through. Um, Jupiter at this time for the entire time that he transits through Gemini and Chiron is really using that information and that expansion that growth and the possible changes of beliefs that come through that new information to really heal these deep wounds of identity of knowing who you are of who we are of how we fit into the bigger picture of not being good enough you know low self esteem low self worth and um, all of that comes into chiron in aries so it's really interesting that we've got this square being activated at this time and again it's just another opportunity to really connect with a huge healing opportunities so yeah i just want to show you the galactic chart now and this is from the galactic astro chart calculator and um, this is the wheel version i find that um the sort of the printout with all the names and all the um numbers on it can be slightly overwhelming even for me and i'm used to working with them so i thought this might be an easier way to show you some of the galactic connections and alignments and influences um, what I will say, this only shows the conjunctions and obviously there are lots more um, aspects in the chart, but just to sort of highlight a few that stand out. Um, we have, for me, a crux is really, really um, significant at this time because a crux at 12 degrees, 12 minutes of Scorpio is very, very close to Venus. Now, a crux 
is um, a star. It's the Southern Cross. Um, so very much a navigational star system, and one that is recognised in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, it is very much linked to regeneration and to rebirth, to fertility. But through Scorpio, it, there's also a kind of acceptance that we need to shed layers of the old if we are to bring in the new. So again, you know, that theme of transformation and letting go that is coming through this North Node solar eclipse is almost accented through Venus and Scorpio and the alignment to a crux. Um, you know, this can include as well sort of old paradigms, old beliefs, old ways of being that we are letting go, that we are releasing and shedding. Um, and with um, the trine to... Saturn, it's almost as, you know, as we do that, we are able to almost step into a higher version of ourselves. And through Pisces, you know, this is almost stepping into the void, letting go of the ego, letting go of what we've been very attached to in our material human 3D world, and just having to trust that there is something greater than us that is going to come forward and really help us sort of ascend and step up as we move through and we experience all these shifts. So, um, yeah, a crux is a very healing energy. It is also related through sort of the symbolism of the cross. There is Christ consciousness here and the acknowledgement um, that, you know, sometimes we have to experience suffering in order to be reborn and to be rebirthed in much in the way that Christ um, story. So, you know, the crucifixion, what he went through in order to sort of, you know, give his life for others. So again, you know, there is that symbolism and that acknowledgement that this is not an easy journey, but that the suffering and the pain will be worth it, that it has a purpose. And um, so again, very reassuring um, sort of um, support coming through this fixed star. And um, and the, the next um, sort of star that I want to talk about is the opposition with alpha reticulum because alpha reticulum is now at seven, well, sorry, not now. Alpha reticulum is at seven degrees, 53 minutes of Aries. So, you know, it is very much activating the nodal axis now, but also the sun and the moon, Mercury, Black Moon, Lilith, Maki Maki are also very much um, sort of working with this star. Now, usually for fixed star alignments, I will only go to two degrees. Um, so obviously it is a slightly wider um, orb here, but I do feel that the themes of Alpha Reticulum are very relevant to this eclipse. And probably, you know, even if we were just to stay with the south nodes and I explain, you can see how it is very relevant because Alpha Reticulum in the Reticuli constellation is very much a star um, that has associations with regeneration, with rebirth, with finding a new way to be. When things have become intolerable through toxicity for the beings that lived in that star system and they were no longer able to reproduce, um, you know, their fertility was affected, they had to find ways of saving themselves. And for them, it involved going underground, which is very symbolic because, again, it you have to go into that dark, into that shadow space into what is hidden beneath in order to find new ways to rebirth themselves and to rebirth and um, bring new life in 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 po possibly using very different ways than they had previously done before so this is really interesting in terms of you know what i'm saying about bringing in the new and this course of sort of overriding theme of fertility and regeneration and finding new ways to be that actually align much more with how we want our world to look at, but also having to really let go and almost go through, you know, a real t period of turmoil, chaos and crisis, which um, the, um, the Zetas and Reticulum experienced in order to be able to find a new way. So again, the themes come through the chart in so many different ways. So let's, um, we have Algol, we've talked about Algol is conjunct um, Uranus here in Taurus. And again, you know, I'm not going to sort of repeat what I've said about this star, but it does, again, bring in the themes of the divine feminine, very much so. And, and the sort of the empowerment through um, facing your fears and sort of standing up. 
and the and facing the shadow side so there's some really interesting themes there which you know we have talked about before and the other um there's just so much to say and I got I don't want to um to kind of go on forever and ever and um, but Sirius A the fact that Sirius A is activating Mars in this chart is really beautiful because this is a star that we sort of associate with our human galactic history you know beings from Sirius A the Syrians are very connected to us um, as our sort of galactic relations and there's also the sense of wisdom of mastery Sirius A is um linked to the mystery History schools to the ascended masters it's where many of them went to learn to grow their knowledge base and their wisdom and so again you know we have the influence and the support of this star coming in which is really energizing us which is giving us new passion new drive new motivation but it's also helping us to really connect with our ancestry and our lineage and you know what we hold deep within through that cancer you know where who are what are our foundations where do we come from and again you know we have this sort of galactic star Sirius star which of course is the spiritual sun it's one of the brightest stars in the sky shining a light almost saying you know look over here consider this come and sort of consider that you know that there might be more to, to life than what we have been told and um, so what else the super galactic center again you know th this um the supergalactic center is one of the cosmic points. So it is very much sort of um, acting as a black hole, very magnetic, sort of stripping away everything that is not rooted in truth and integrity, that is not supporting your growth. And, you know, when we have activations with the supergalactic center, it is often about um, relationships and growth through relationships. And we may be drawn to specific relationships almost like we cannot escape. You know, we can't um, sort of choose. Yeah, we can't turn away from them because the draw is so powerful. But that is because we're sort of working with this black hole energy. So the super galactic center, you know, the north south node is getting very close to it now. It's at two degrees, 22 minutes of Libra. And um, there is a much wider orb with this eclipse. But I feel that this energy is significant and it is having an impact. And it is really um, asking us or inviting us to stretch our minds and our consciousness in order to consider ways of being and ways of living and relating that may, you know, may not have even come across, we may not even have come across or considered or being able to consider before. It might sound so absolutely crazy and wild and, you know, that just not even possible, but the galactic center and this cosmic energy, you know, it can act very much um, in similar ways to, well, in a similar way that an eclipse does, you sort of bringing something in that is completely unexpected and really shifting the trajectory um, you know, changing timelines, bending time, bending consciousness so that, you know, we can bring something new in very quickly that might not have been on one timeline before, but suddenly we're on another one and, you know, there's a whole new world. Um, so, yeah, the super galactic center is going to be really amazing. And as the South Node gets closer, you know, the potential for that is going to increase. So that is definitely one to watch. Again, you know, this is up until the end of January or mid-January, I think the nodes change um, into Pisces and Virgo. So, yeah, very influential. Hey, so what I um, should have also said, or well, it's it's time now, um, is that Atlantis, so the asteroid Atlantis is at 29 degrees of Virgo at the time of this eclipse. So in an exact trine to Pluto, both being at the anoretic degree of their respective signs. And this for me is really sort of acknowledging that, you know, we are very much working with some past lives and um, with some trauma that we are bringing through at sort of through our ancestors, through our own past life experience. And obviously Atlantis, you know, there are themes here of this ancient civilization where there was a, an abuse and a misuse of power and control where things got out of hand. And what happened was, the, you know, everything crumbled and um, and the civilization fell and was ultimately wiped out in a huge tsunami and huge flood. So, you know, a lot of us are carrying through and bringing through memories and themes and traumas from our Atlantean lifetimes and our Atlantean ancestors, which are very much being 
and healed in this lifetime. And the fact that we have, you know, this trine at this solar eclipse is just really quite magical and amazing because Pluto is going to help us to access those through the sort of digging and the excavation of what has been hidden, but also to um, transform those into something more magical and that is really supporting our evolution. So it's not saying that, you know, we need to sort of wipe it clean. Obviously, there are lessons that we have to learn, and that is very much part of what we're going through now. But it is also being able to accept that, you know, this is part of our healing journey. And as so many of us heal these wounds um, and sort of... Um, yeah, memories and energies from the Atlantis, Atlantean period that, you know, it is going to set so many of us free in order that we can move higher and that we can ascend. And again, you know, the fact that it's all happening at that 29 degree, which is the anoretic degree where, you know, there is almost a like quick, we've got to get this done now. There's a real rush, but actually there's also the potential to really master this and, you know, have it um yeah get it get it done if if, uh, if that's a right way to put it um so yeah really incredible um sort of and very pertinent something and i wanted to bring that in as well I've got to the end of what I wanted to say. I hope you've been able to follow it. Um, it does because it's an air sort of eclipse you know I sometimes find I have a lot of words and I go off on tangents, you know, because I have got very strong air in my own chart. So I hope you've been able to follow it. And um, ultimately, you know, we are very much about releasing old patterns, old paradigms, old attachments, old relationships. Um, and, you know, and bringing in this new balance, this new peace. And, you know, there is definitely a leveling up going to be happening around relationships and a lot of revelations as well that are going to help us to see what has been hidden. You know, and this isn't always in the collective. Yes, it is going to happen in the collective, but it is also about what have you been hiding from yourself or what have others been hiding from you in your life? So, again, just be mindful that, you know, this is likely to be coming through, but it is helping you to evolve and grow and see the true light of a situation and it's pushing you forward um so um yeah we cannot bring in the new if we're still holding on to lots of baggage and clutter in the old and it's sort of just getting in the way you know we have to have that beautiful clear space and this eclipse is really helping us to do that so thank you so much for watching. Um, I will be back soon. There's going to be loads more to say. I'm going to be sending out my October newsletter soon. So if you're not on my mailing list yet and you want to be, just sign up for that through my website, spiralbright.co.uk. And yeah, please comment, share the video if you find it useful. Let me know what you think. And I look forward to um, being back again soon.